People always ask me for the recipes for my dressing, but I'm not very good with recipes. I'm kind of more of a just, you know, make it up as I go along kind of person. So here's my recipe. A dozen egg yolks and a gloop of oil, maybe a gloop and a half of oil. And then, a, now this is a little bit clogged, but a squirt of soap like that. Just enough to keep those oils in solution. And then enough water to cover. And this is what we're looking for. Nice and yellow with a little bit of foam at the top. It doesn't have to be really yellow colored, but you're gonna have it make your hand feel a little bit greasy when it goes in there, but not very, just the littlest bit slimy. And you'll wanna see some sheen of oil on the surface, but not like a slick of oil. If you did that, you added too much oil or not enough soap. So it shouldn't be enough to really form a distinct layer on top. You want it in teensy little driplets so that it can get into the middle of the hide. In the dressing, where it will slurp it all up like it was born to. I tend to kind of work and massage and stretch it a bit when it first goes into the dressing, just to make sure that I've done everything I can to get really even good penetration of that dressing through every little bit of the hide. So this hide has been soaking overnight in the dressing. It is time to get it wrung. So ringing achieves two things. One, it's drying the hide out, so it's wringing a lot of the moisture out, so it gets it closer to the stage at which it's really important to work it. So when it's really wet and sloppy, it, it's going to be drying really slowly, and the glues in the hide are going to be so wet that they're not really sticky. But once it's getting to the moisture content where it's starting to turn opaque, that is when we want to start working it really hard. So it really saves you a ton of time and energy to wring it to get it to that stage rather than just let it sit and dry out. So that's one thing that wringing does. And then the second thing is through the mechanical action of wringing it with a, with a long stick, it's going to really multiply my strength and it's going to force those fibers apart really strongly and push the dressing through them. So it's going to really help to get the dressing all throughout the fiber network of the hide and really get good penetration of the brains or whatever dressing you're using so that all of the fibers are really, really coated. So then when you come to the softening process, you're not going to be fighting those glues as much. The hide is going to want to work with you and that's super key. So ringing, really important in all kinds of ways. And this is just what we will want to see the hide really sloppy and slurpy and slimy and really, really well juiced up with that dressing. So it's a, little, it's a little funky and slimy to the touch when you pull it out, but that's how you want it. So I always try to drain some of the dressing back into the bucket as my first step. So I like to hang it so that the neck is coming towards me so that it's right in the middle of the loop I'm going to be making. Okay. So rolling it up from either side. There, that's perfect. And now grabbing a stick, or in my case, a lead pipe. And the longer your ringing stick, the more torque you're going to get, which can be helpful for getting a good ring. But if it's too long, it could be too strong for your hide and you can actually tear your hide, which I have definitely done before. And I like the ringing beam to be about chest high to me, so that as I'm winding it up, I'm in a really good position to be putting downward pressure on the ringing stick. And I can also kind of dangle from it easily and use my body weight.
So I typically go around at least four times. So I do a quarter turn, ring one direction, the other direction. So that gives me eight ringings. And then sometimes I'll throw in an extra two ringings so that I overlap the first place that I started. And then I'm certain that I get a really good ring on the whole hide. And I'm not sure if you can see, but it's now really skinny and kind of yellow colored up at the top where it was really blue and really wet before. And the whole hide is looking a lot more kind of tawny yellow colored than it was. And that's the indication, that's the color indication that the hide is starting to get really nicely dry. See how it's mostly that nice yellow color? Sweet. So check out what happens as I pull it for the first time. Can you see that? Now look at the color change between those two halves of the hide, where it's been opened and where it hasn't yet, and how this is tawny yellow. So this is great. It's a really nicely wrung out hide. So this hide has been wrung and then squeegeed and then softened by hand a bit, and it is now the perfect moisture content to put back into the dressing one more time. Even though it feels like it might soften without that, I'm gonna just do it this time just as an added safety precaution, and then I'm fairly sure that it's just going to pull like a dream, which is always worth a little more effort to make sure is going to be the case. So back in the dressing. And last time I left it overnight in the dressing, but this time I'm just going to give it an hour or so because I know it's just going to be in such an absorptive state. It's just going to suck all of that up in no time. And it is a really hot day, so I don't want to push it back any later in the day than I have to so I don't get heat stroke working this thing. All right, the critical stage of softening has begun. And from here on out, I am actively working every part of the hide as often as I can get around to them all to keep all of these fibers constantly moving while it is drying. And it gets kind of more opaque and soft and fluffy as I go if I'm keeping it moving fast enough. So basically picture it like a whole bunch of strings coated in Elmer's glue. And the Elmer's glue is just getting to where it's getting nice and tacky. And you need to move all of those strings past each other and keep them all constantly moving so that that glue can't stick them together in any one place or stiffen the individual string. So each microscopic protein fiber in here is like those strings. So I'm keeping them constantly moving and stretching so that it's gonna stay soft and pliable, just like a piece of string would if you kept it in constant motion, even though it was coated in glue. So there are a lot of different ways to do that. As you see, I'm just pulling it in my hands a lot so I go down the length of the spine and then across and then in angles just to keep those fibers constantly moving. And then I'm going to go around the edges of the hide. And what I like to do is pinch the hide between the thumbnail of my thumb and my finger and just pull straight out so that I'm working those edges nicely as well. So depending on the hide, and the weather and other factors, maybe you can keep up with working your hide just through these means, but it can be really helpful to have other mechanical assists. And so as soon as I'm done going around this with my hands, I'm gonna throw this hide onto this here cable, which is gonna really help me move it further faster and really keep it so soft and fluffy more so than I can do with just my body. All right, so edges are good and middle of the hide has been worked. 
So now I'm gonna take it onto the cable and I'm gonna work it just on the membrane side of the hide because the grain side is the strongest part and the cable can be a little bit aggressive and come, sometimes it can kind of grip and abrade the surface. And I don't wanna do that on my nice strong grain surface. So part of what makes a cable so effective is I can lean back and let gravity and my body weight do a lot of the work. And also the fact that the hide is bending so severely to get around the cable. So that's really wrenching those fibers apart really strongly. Another benefit of the cable is because you're working this hide back and forth across it, you're creating a lot of friction, which creates heat. So it can actually help your hide dry out faster, which is really helpful if you're not in an ideal sunny spot like this. So sometimes you don't want your hide to dry so fast. So I like to have a cable in the sunshine and a cable in the shade so I can go back and forth between them depending on how fast I want to dry my hide or how slow I want to go if it's a big hide and I'm having a hard time getting around to all of the fibers before some start getting stuck with all of those glues. Another favorite technique of mine is using my legs to work the hide. So, you know, I'm not a very big person and I don't have the big burly upper body that a lot of men have. So it's really nice for me to be able to bring in the largest muscles in my body, which are of course my legs and my butt. So I work the hide with those by putting it over my knees and using my knees to wrench the hide apart. And I'm gonna go first across the spine, the whole length of the hide across the spine, and then the whole length of the hide with the spine. And then I'll go at an angle, keeping those fibers moving as many directions as possible, as often as possible. Another good tool for softening hides and just mixing up the muscles that you're using is a steak. So this is gonna be an upper body tool, but using more shoulders and less arm muscle. Really good for getting in to those areas like the rumps if they're starting to resist you because it really digs into the hide and is a fairly aggressive tool. This one is for a taller person than me. This ideally I like to have them like sternum high so I can really use my body weight, but this one works. And it's a little bit hard to get the edges with the stake. So back to fingernails and then to the cable. Here's an area of the hide that's very thin and it's basically done. So I'm gonna show you one of the ways to tell and that is that when you stretch the fibers, they bounce back afterwards. Wet fibers, like over here, when I stretch them, oh no, those are getting pretty done too. All right, like here, when I stretch them one direction, they stay that direction. See that? They stay, but the drier areas when I stretch them, they bounce right back to how they were. So that shows me that they have elasticity and there's no glues in there active anymore. It's totally dry. Another thing you can do is feel it with your lips because your lips are very sensitive. They have a lot of nerve endings at the surface and they can feel 
temperature and moisture. So sometimes you might not feel moisture, but the hide will feel a little cool, and that's indication that it still has a deep moisture in there. So using your hands is helpful, but your hands tend to have calluses, and they're nowhere near as sensitive. Your lips are one, some of the most sensitive parts of your body, so really, really good for sensing that subtle, deep moisture in the hide. Feeling pretty good. It's just about there. So, as you can see now, it's bouncing back really nicely, just about everywhere. There is still a little bit of moisture in each rump and in the neck, which is how it tends to go. But the nice thing is that now it's a much more relaxing process because I'm not trying to fight the glues on the entire hide, just those areas that still have moisture. All right, that is a heck of a beautiful, luscious, fluffy, soft, stretchy, wonderful hide. So the next stage is getting another one of these ready and then gluing them together into a bag for smoking.